YouTube, what's going on guys? Listen, this video right here is full of gems. This is the first time I've sat down and had a live stream and a discussion with Pacinos, but it's crazy how similar our stories are and how similar we are. There's gonna be some parts in there where you, you'll get exactly what I'm talking about, but man, don't if you need to, man, take notes or whatever, but because these are gems, man, in this live stream, you're gonna hear things that we learned over the course of building real businesses, you know, from nothing. No investors, no loans really from the ground up man it's also you know we did this live stream because there's a event coming up uh, that Jay Majors and Pacinos are putting together called the health and wealth summit it's not just for barbers it's, you could bring pretty much anybody because it's covering health and wealth there's some amazing speakers that aren't in the industry that are just pioneers and innovators within their own lane um, they're gonna bring nuggets that can benefit everyone especially my barbers and stylists this right here is really just a taste of what the event's gonna be like, man. It's gonna be dope. So with that being said, man, let's go ahead and start this live stream. Pacino's is probably the biggest pioneer when it comes to a barber coming from behind the chair and building a multi-million dollar company. And he did it off of, off of hard work, man. So I can't wait for you guys to listen to it. Let me know in the comments what you think. Smash the like button. And we drop daily content on this channel, man. So make sure you subscribe. What up, man? So Basio Cuts, man, I was saying earlier, I'm, bro, first and foremost, I'm definitely proud of you, bro. Like, <laughs> him, like, honestly, man, it's like, I've seen, like, your growth. I remember I, I saw you in Russia, and I got to be honest, bro, like, with all due respect, and, and don't be mad at me. But I, I won't. I didn't know who you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I with you. I had no idea who you were. I just remember you looked like The Rock. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like this dude looks like The Rock. And then... <laughs> Come back, and then little by little, I start seeing this 245 thing. I'm like, okay, like he's doing it. And then all of a sudden, I start seeing it more and more. Now, you know, again, it's like I think Jay had the video. He posted the video of like your warehouse and stuff like that, and 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 then how it started. So like you literally, like you literally started making like your own products, but like that was crazy. Like seeing all the like, the jars and stuff like that. You guys were filling it. Like I people understand, man. Like like see, I didn't go that route. Like, I know Curtis Smith also started that route. To me, that's like a whole nother level of production. Yeah. So if you can, just speak to us about like, you know, how you started and, and your growth. And I'm sure a lot of your viewers probably know, you know, your backstory. But to be honest, I don't know the full story and probably some of my viewers don't know the full story. So I would just love to hear some of your like entrepreneurship so people understand that it just doesn't happen overnight. For me, man, I had no idea how to get started. I started with YouTube and people were asking me to come out to the shows and you know how expensive the shows are. A lot of us, man, we look at these these invoices and these bills and even from like the union, when you go to the shows, it's like, oh my gosh, they charge a lot of money. But you know, when I found out how expensive it was, I knew I had to create a product in order to go to shows. Cause all I really wanted to do was educate. You know right. what I mean? I Help people that's it my subscribers were asking me to make a, a, a shave gel or well, i had to figure it out so i was trying to find contract manufacturers to help me out and boy it was it was really a, a shocker because you know i never messed with any of that stuff when they were telling me what the minimums were formulation costs the packaging it's expensive bro you know so i couldn't go that route so i'm like you know what i'm gonna try to figure out how to create my own gel I watched YouTube videos on it. I took online courses on it. I educated myself on it. And I was using my wife's hand mixers, her bowls in the kitchen. You know what I mean? And tried to formulate a bunch of bad shave gel. Everybody hated and finally got to a point where I made a shave gel where, where people were rocking with it. Yeah. So. And like I said, man, I'm really proud of you just because I don't think sometimes people realize like, like I have nothing but respect for any entrepreneur because it's like, I know the amount of hours that go into it. And then people don't realize like, it's one thing to create a brand, right? So you have your brand here. Now, once you create this brand, now how do you market it, right? How do you actually get it out there? And then on top of that, now financially, now you gotta think about the finances. Like, man, do I have enough money to do the marketing and for cost of goods? The, now all of a sudden you have to balance, if you have a family, like, all right, how do I get that involved as well? So there's so many different little variables that go into being an entrepreneur and, and creating a brand and launching it and then just doing all the little things, all the little sacrifices. Like I remember when I first got into Target, I literally bought myself a $3,000 Scion, which I still have in my in my garage. And I yeah with all Target stuff. And it was me and my videographer, my boy Gio, good dude, man. Like, he's been like rocking me since day one. And uh, I told him, I was like, yo, I'm about to go on tour. 
And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm about to go on tour by myself. And he's like, what, what do you mean? What do you do? I said, well, I'm just going to hand out these little samples of my, like my Pacino's mat. And I'm going to put a little call to action sticker on top that says now available at Target. And I basically drove it with Gio from Miami all the way up to New York. And in between, like every city where we had Targets available that had our products, we would stop there and I would just hang out in front of the Targets and just guys that looked like they had some type of a hairstyle going on, I just walk up to them and I would tell them like, hey, I work for Target. I didn't even tell them I had anything to do with Pacino's. I said, hey, I work for Target. This is our new product that I came out with. I would open it, I'm like, yo, smell it. And I'm like, man, it smells good. And I would talk to them about the product, right? They're like, man, you know a lot about the product. And at the time I have no hair. Like you don't even have hair. Like I didn't know so much about this product. I'm like, well, yeah. you know, I love hairstyle products. I used to have hair though. And so you <laughs> laugh about it. And I would just do this in every city. And I, I did this, we did about 25 cities, bro. Like we got to Chicago, I shipped this sign out to like Las Vegas. Two weeks later, we flew to Vegas because that's how long it took for them to transport this little car. Picked it up in Vegas and drove it to San Diego. From San Diego, we went all the way up to San Francisco. So we did this for about 35 days, bro. So I was away from my family for about a whole month and a half almost. And uh, people don't realize like the commitment it takes for you to be able to just get yourself out there and uh, get your brand out there. I don't care about nothing else. Like, I, I don't care about no shows. I don't care about like hanging out. Like, this is all it's about. And that's what we did, man. And Gio's on here, thank you, bro. Because like, we'll be driving for hours. Can you imagine being in a car with somebody sometimes for eight hours straight, bro? Like, yeah. he would be literally in the car editing videos for me. Funny, bro, because when we were in Russia, my videographer at the time met your videographer and they had so much in common. Cause I, I used to go on tour too. And we used to do like, 30 city tours um, we would do like three cities a week we would try at least and the same grind bro like we'd be in hotel rooms because we would have to pump out videos for youtube that didn't stop you know what i mean while you were you know going city to city promoting yourself and doing classes and, and things like that so i definitely could relate and that's one thing i respect about you and jay that you guys you know can outsource all that type of stuff you know what i mean but you don't you go out there and you you know you hit the ground yourself you get your hands dirty yourself you know what i mean you know me and my team we look up to that you know what i mean that i think that's important and that's something that real entrepreneurs never stop doing because it's in your it's something you love to do you know what i'm saying and at the warehouse man we always talk about trusting but verifying you gotta you trust but you verify and yeah. and it's okay to verify me it's okay if i verify you i think that's that's something you have to embed in the culture of your company or else people are gonna have you know indian huddles and have and get get mad about about things when in all reality we're checking each other for progress for the for for good you know what i mean you got to protect yourself and your family and, and and your business and verify it as well if you don't ever verify they're going to care less and less as well it's not their business right ask questions and i feel like you know you, you, you're stepping on people's toes or like you're stepping over your boundaries like yeah. i think that's like it's your taxes it's your money it's like you got to figure it out like yo like and and i think that that's probably been one of the biggest things for me is just that is like just doing your due diligence right like understanding that it's not just about like okay he did it this way so i gotta do it this way like not nah, like let me jump into google let me jump into youtube let me mm -hmm. Three, four different people. Like I'm the type of person. Like anybody in the office will tell you. Like my guy, um, Christian, he'll hit me up. He'll be like, "Hey, so this is the price we got on this." I'm like, "How many people did you call?" He's like, "Just one." I'm like, "That's not enough, bro. Call a couple other people. Get me some more estimates." Yeah. He's like, Realized. I was like, "You know what? I actually enjoy cutting hair, and why not try to really take this to that next level?" That's pretty much what I did, man. I just I kept cutting hair. I kept trying to like better myself. And then when MySpace came out, I started posting my pictures. Before you know it, you know, I started to scale. Going back to just the whole entrepreneurial thing, it's like, I love just seeing people just like really make it when they had nothing, you know what I'm saying? And just watching that video of like you guys in the backyard with like <laughs> mosquitoes probably biting you guys, <laughs> pumping that gel up. I saw it, I was like, yo, that's so dope, bro. Those runs, we used to start at like seven o'clock in the morning and we wouldn't finish till sometimes 10, 11 at night. And it would be funny because, you know, the kids would be sleeping and we had to quiet down, you know what I mean? And, and we're still pumping, trying to be quiet while, you know, family sleeping, you know? It would take us an entire day to make like 800 bottles. An entire day, bro, an entire day. That's probably like one of those things that nowadays, like you value that so much that, you know, you appreciate that, you know, and, and it makes you that much more humble, understanding like, yo, you, you know, you definitely went through some humble beginnings, you know what I'm saying? I never got a loan, that's the other thing. Yeah, you know, me either. I started my business 
through straight barbering, cash money, invest. I don't know about yourself, but I always had a rule of thumb. And my rule of thumb was always like, I always had to reinvest anywhere from like 10 to 20% of what I was making back into like marketing, whatever, whatever marketing was at the time. Like all these marketing things I've ever done, to be honest, like I never really put a price tag on it. And I never really cared about like, what was I going to get out of it, right? Like I did it because I felt like it was a great idea. Like, you know, same thing with the billboards. I remember even doing just three on three basketball tournaments just because I used to love basketball. Like I, I used did to- you have, uh, Like Madden tournaments at the shop or like two-day yeah. tournaments? Like, yep. like those would go crazy. Yeah, people would just show up for it. And, and again, these are yeah. some little like marketing ideas that people don't realize. Like you can really organically get people involved in something that they really want. And there goes that branding that you're looking for, you know? And, and again, at the time, I didn't realize like, you know, like nowadays, digitally, they call it, you know, impressions. You know, they have all these different terms for it. But back then we were just doing it based off the strength of like, hey, like, we just kind of want to be a part of something that everybody's going to come out to as opposed to like, all right, I didn't even know this, but at the time I could have been getting sponsorships from like other major companies to be able to like fund these events that I was just doing by myself, you know? Now later on, you know, I started learning like, wait, hold on. Like if I'm getting all these type of impressions, I'm getting all these type of views, like we may be onto something, right? And now all of a sudden you create something called a pitch deck and you send it to all these major companies because these major companies are the ones that are really looking at like, all right, like how can I get my brand out there? Because they're not in touch with what's going on. Like people like yourself and I, like, you know, it, it, we're never going to get, we're never going to be out of touch because we have that mentality of like, what's going on right now? We have our ears to the street. Like we want to know. Like you were saying, man, when you're constantly involved, man, and you got your ears to the, to the industry, that's an advantage. That's a hell of an advantage. You know what I mean? Like that can put you five moves ahead of even big corporations, you know? But, you know, I understand the value of, of what a dollar is. And, uh, and that's always been in my mindset. I'm like, I, I don't want nothing for free. Like, I don't want you to give me something and then be able to say, oh, look, I made it. Like, nah, like, let me earn it first. You know what I mean? So uh, I just think as an entrepreneur, I think that's probably like the biggest thing is just understanding like, do you really want this? Cause you know, you can't kind of want it. I was telling a lot of people, man, stop rushing the process because the wealth is in the experiences and the knowledge that you gain along the way, right? Like that's the price of stuff. That's the stuff that Harvard can't teach you. That's the stuff that you can, you know, money. If you don't know how to make the money or if you don't know how to put yourself in the position that you want to be in, if it's taken away, you're not gonna know how to do it again. You that gotta, the process, the experience, that puts you in a, in a strong foundation to get to the next level because there's always next levels. It doesn't stop. I remember having a friend, right? And he was like, man, I need like 20K to start a business. And I told him, I was like, yo, to be honest, you don't need 20K to start a business. That's just number one. Number two, I'm going to tell you from experience, the day that you actually have 20K, you're going to say, I need 40K, right? Yeah. The between somebody having 20k and somebody not really having anything in the bank per se is like with 20k if you invest it the right way cool you might get some residual back from it but the reality is like what is 20k going to do for you what is 10k going to do for you if you don't already have a game plan on how you're going to invest whether it's 10k 5k 20k it's like what good if i give you 50k right now what are you going to do with it i work every day not so much to have more money than i had yesterday i work every day to be able to maintain what i have and increase but at the same time like i'm working for freedom yeah that's so funny man that you say that man because we have the same conversations and you know with, with my team man we have the same conversations bro like sometimes we got to remind each other like like i was telling you i don't take any money from the company we don't pay like we don't pay ourselves right now because we we have down and we have strategically said this is the goal and in order to do that and if we want to do it quickly we need to reinvest everything right but there's still some things that sometimes as an entrepreneur you kind of forget about and that's the things that you were talking about just now the freedom part like hold on guys hold on like i know it's it's a grind and, and all that good stuff but don't forget you create your own schedule you get to pick up your kids you get to drop them off like there's things that you didn't get to do when you was working at a fast food restaurant or something like that. You know what I mean? Yo, I've been wanting to ask you this. Yeah, yeah, how, yeah. how old is your daughter? Uh, my daughter's seven years old. So my daughter's seven years old as well. This is gonna blow your mind. So we're both Colombian, right? Yeah. yeah. My son's name's Elijah. Oh, that's my son. Check this out. My daughter's seven years old. Her name's Valentina. I no. kid. Oh. <laughs> I kid you not, bro. No, I tell you that. Insane. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. bro. Very bro. It's insane. That is crazy, bro. Yeah. You don't have to be your son, do you? <laughs> no, no. 
<laughs> no, no. I love just seeing people like really getting out there because people don't really, really understand like the behind the scenes, how long it takes to edit a picture, how long it takes to edit a video, you know, how long it takes to just to come up with a caption to be able to just put it out there and stay consistent with it. Yeah. That, okay. Got, just coming up with the ideas of the videos or the, or the projects you're going to work on and be consistent on it. It's one of those things that'll keep you up at night, right? <laughs> All day, man. Being consistent is going to take you a lot farther than being really smart or, or, or just, you know, being real creative. You can be as creative as you want, but if you're not consistent with it, then it really doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you want to do in life, like, you just got to be consistent with it because eventually it will happen for you. Like, the more consistent you are, it's like the higher percentage that something good will happen eventually. I'll be honest with you. I'm tired of like going to shows and seeing the barber section look like a flea market. And then you see the Cosmo section and they got, you know, crazy $350,000 booths and stuff. And it's like, we're doing too much competing with one another in a small pot. And I always say it, it's like when we could work together, we can collaborate. And I think I've seen that a lot more often now with a lot of the barber brands, but we could collectively work together to grow the industry. We all win that way. You know what I'm saying? And so when he hit me up about trying to do this Health and Wealth Summit, he was like, yo, like I've been wanting to do something with you. And we've talked about trying to do something together. And uh, he was like, you know, I think we should do something like a summit, like a Health and Wealth, really, you know, try to help the barber industry. And that's one thing I can appreciate about him is like, he's really always like done it for the industry. You know what I'm saying? He gave me that opportunity. I was like, you know what, man? I was like, let's do it. Cause he already knew how I felt about like you said, like going to bar battles, going to expos. I wanted to stay away from it because I just really wanted to focus on the brand. And I told him, I was like, you know what, man? Like, especially after this pandemic, I feel like it's good just for all of us to unite again. And and if I could help another barber out, you know, with, with some gems or, or some info and things like that, it's like, then why not at this point? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think that, uh, you know, we're putting this event together. As soon as we put it together, he was like, yo, we're, we're definitely doing a panel. And you were basically like one of the first names that popped up because we understood, bro, that you're like that that young entrepreneur coming up. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I came through already. It's like, you're that next one coming through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to be amazing to see them all together, man, and networking and what can be bred from this, bro, what can come from this. I'm glad you guys are planning to do more in different regions of the country, you know, and yeah, I'm excited to be part of the panel and I'm, I'm going to bring some heat, man, on, on the stage. I know, I know you will for sure, man. Definitely. Yeah.